Good morning and welcome to the Resurrection Lutheran Cooperative Ministry on this Pentecost Sunday. We have a few announcements for you this morning. The first is intense camp is a go as we've been saying the past few weeks and registration is live. Uh, we will have the links uh, to that, both Pastor Joyce and I. So if you're interested in coming to camp, please talk to one of us and we'll get you all registered and ready to go. Uh, we're excited for camp this year. We've already got some participants signing up uh, throughout the Mission District. And if you have questions, please uh, talk to Pastor Joyce or myself. Uh, we're both on the committee to uh, plan the camp. So we, we know some firsthand knowledge of what will be happening. Uh, and then also our other announcement uh, is... Uh, we're collecting uh, money for blankets for Lutheran World Relief. They're $5 a blanket, so it's a, a fundraiser to help out the Lutheran World Relief. They give these blankets to those who in need, and they use them for all kinds of things. So it's a really good uh, way to help out with mission. And so the, that will be $5 a blanket. If you have any questions, please talk to Pastor Joyce. And let us now prepare our hearts and our minds for worship on this Pentecost Sunday. We begin this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a call and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and only by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. life into our bones and your spirit brings truth to the world send us this spirit transform us by your truth and give us language to proclaim your gospel through jesus christ our savior and lord who lives and reigns with you in the holy spirit one god now and forever amen the first lesson is from the second chapter of acts when the day of pentecost arrived they were all together in one place and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in, our, in our, his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in, in our own tongues the mighty works of God. 
And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others mocking said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even on my male servants and female servants. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day, and it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is Psalm 104. Man goes forth to his work and to his labor until the evening. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Your honor is the great and wide sea, with its living things too many to number, creatures both small and great. There move the ships, and there is the Le Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give, give them, them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth, and it trembles. He touches the mountains, and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. The second lesson is from the eighth chapter of Romans. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the fit, first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons the redemption of our bodies for in this hope we were saved now hope that is seen is not hope for who hopes for what he sees but if we hope for what we do not see we wait for it with patience likewise the spirit helps us in our weakness for we do not know what to pray for as we ought but the spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words and he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. John, the 15th and 16th chapters. But when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me, and you also will bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me, and none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you, and when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. 
concerning judgment because the ruler of the world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of our Lord. Hi, boys and girls. Well, today is a special day, and I brought some things to celebrate today. Let me see. I've got some birthday hats. I think you need one of these on your head. And I got some noisemakers. And I can't think we can do that during church, but I have some noisemakers. And I have a happy birthday banner. Now, why would I be bringing these to church? Well, because today is a birthday. Today is the birthday of the church. All the way back, I, we are over 2,000 years old. How about that? That's even older than I am. Yeah. Or even Wayne, who was reading up there. So today we do celebrate. It is a great day that we have. And it's wonderful. And on this day, the Holy Spirit is the gift that we receive. For this birthday. I mean, when we go to a birthday party, we often take a gift with us to somebody else. But this day, the gift of the Holy Spirit is what comes to us. And we are so happy about that. So let us rejoice and let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for sending us the Holy Spirit to bring us your truth, to Help us to see and to know you even more. Through Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's always fun to have a party. Grace and peace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, I was watching Harry Potter the other night in the Chamber of Secrets. And in one of the scenes... Harry was in Dumbledore's office. He walked over to a cage which held a beautiful bird. Fox is the bird's name. And as Harry watched, the beautiful bird burst into flames. Harry's eyes grew big. Oh no! And then from the ashes arose a new bird, a new phoenix. Dumbledore explained, it is fine. It's about time that this happened. New life arises. Well, now Jesus tells his disciples and us that unless he goes away, ascends to heaven, the helper will not come to us. The disciples were filled with sorrow when they were told that Jesus would return to the Father. But then this was and is when the Holy Spirit will rise and come to us. This is an exciting day. It's the birthday of the church, and it's about new life, then and it is today now. We often think of Pentecost as a historical event, one that happened many years ago. But the Holy Spirit is not something in the past only. The Holy Spirit was, is, and always will be. From the very beginning, in Genesis 1, the Spirit moved over the waters. Jesus told his disciples that the helper comes whom he will send from the Father, the spirit of truth, and he will bear witness about Jesus. Well, my friends, I have great news for you. The Holy Spirit is alive and very well and living among us. Praise God for that. It is time that we recognize the new life that arises all around us hearing the swirling wind, catching the fire dancing around us. The church is not dead. That is a false rumor. And today we celebrate the life 
that we have in the church. Praise God. In reading for today, David Schmidt talks about hiking in the woods. I like to hike in the beautiful woods, but it's really important that we follow a trail. And there are usually more than one trail to choose from. Sometimes it is good to take the trail less traveled, but in doing so, the trail markings may not be quite as clear. It tells of his experience on the trail. And while the eight mile loop seemed pretty clear at the head at the trailhead as, as he went along, it became a bit sketchy. Hmm, where do I go? The trail slowly disappeared in a well-worn path into the pathless woods. Oh no. And as he looked around, trying to identify something, something resembling a trail, he noticed a small pile of rocks positioned at the bottom of a tree. He went in that direction, and after hiking that uh, way just for a little while longer, he noticed a similar group of rocks at the bottom of another tree. Some very kind hiker had gone before him and left those small marks to guide his way. Well, that is like the Holy Spirit in our lives. There are to be markers for us on a path of life, guiding us, directing us in the right direction. Do we need truth today? Oh, oh we sure do. And the truth is found in the word of God. The word parakletos is very difficult to translate. Comforter, counselor, advocate, mediator, incessor, helper, one that gives aid are some of the ways that we can translate that Greek word. Jesus promises the spirit will guide us in the truth. The Holy Spirit is what points us in the right direction. It is our guide along the path of life. Today, it is our hope. Last week we asked, well, now that Jesus has ascended into heaven, now what? And this week we're given the answer. And it is to witness to the truth. Our world needs to hear the truth. The path of life seems to have vanished in the dark forest of confusing paths. Things that we used to hold in common, such as marriage, being male or female, are no longer clear in the truth, but tangled in political correctness. Our path in life is getting cloudy, and even the reception of faith is under attack, which chants of anti-science and hate speech. Pastor in London was recently arrested for preaching on Genesis 1 in public. Jesus identifies three works of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit helps us to see how the world is wrong when it speaks about sin, wrong when it speaks about Jesus, and wrong when it speaks about Satan. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus has been raised from the dead. He is the first fruits and Savior for all. And he has defeated Satan. When you come here, gathered with other Christians, you hear these truths. God promises in baptism forgiveness of our sin to defeat death and the devil and life everlasting. These are the truths that we have through Jesus Christ. Bible study the other day, we were talking about the importance of gathering here to hear the word of God and to be fed and nourished with the body and blood of Christ. For me, it's what gets me through the week. I need Jesus to sustain me in my life. I am bombarded from many directions, and I know many of you are too. How am I to know the truth? It is here that we become centered, centered in Christ. It is here that the Holy Spirit is pointing us in the right direction. And it is here that the Holy Spirit carries us in truth throughout the rest of the week. Today, we celebrate a birthday. Today, we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit to guide us. Thanks be to God. Amen.
confess our Christian faith by the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Most holy and gracious spirit, like the air around us, we almost take you for granted. Even though we can't live or breathe except you move in us. Thank you for blowing where you will, even when we don't notice you. Renew our life, faith, and love now and always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Renew your church. Fill it with boldness and witnessing to Jesus. Fill it with faithfulness in proclaiming his word and celebrating his sacraments. Fill it with zeal for ministering to all people in his name, especially to the least of those whom he calls sisters and brothers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Renew the faith of your persecuted church. Give it grace to endure suffering for Jesus' sake and grant that its faithful witness may cause many to turn to Christ and live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Renew the people in the ministry of this congregation. Fill us with joyfulness in worship, eagerness in service, gentleness in fellowship, generosity in giving, and persistence in faithful witness in Jesus' name. We pray for the North American Lutheran Church, area congregations, and today for Hope Lutheran Church of Smithport. Uh, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Renew the faith in all who are confirmed, commissioned, or ordained today. Be for them the true spirit of wisdom and understanding, counsel and might, knowledge and fear of the Lord, and joy in his presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Renew the minds of worldly leaders. Fill their hearts with wisdom and humility as they wield power and authority. Fill the spirits of the world's citizens with love for God, neighbor, and the world around them. Fill creation with fruitfulness and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Renew the minds and direct the actions of all who protect life, health, justice, and freedom. Strengthen and protect them. Bless all they do that is in accordance with your will. Bring them safely home when their task is done. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Renew the hope, faith, and health of all whose need is great, especially all those named before you, either silently or aloud. Fill them with the comfort of your presence and lead them into the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, and cheer the hearts of all who grieve the loss of loved ones. Fill them and all of us with faith in you, the Lord and giver of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share God's peace with those that are around us.
Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts. With them we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Through Abraham you promised to bless all nations. You rescued Israel, your chosen people. Through the prophets you renewed your promise. And at this end of all the ages, you sent your Son who in words and deeds proclaimed your kingdom and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. In the night which he betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, gracious Father, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us. And believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of our Lord and of his resurrection, that we who receive the Lord's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Amen. Come, Amen. Holy Spirit. Join our prayers of those of your servants of every time and every place and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great High Priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
people, one is holy, one is Lord, Jesus Christ to the glory of God the Father. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. <laughs> Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.